Coyote Ugly is a place where you can come and just escape. You can come here and kind of live a fantasy but be mistreated at the same time. It's kind of a southern biker bar meets downtown wasp meets, you know, college frat kids <laughs> all piled into one place. I didn't even really believe there was such a place until I started going to bars like this to kind of check it out. I haven't seen circuses as raucous as this bar. Well, it's like a party. It's one of the best parties you've ever been to. And you got beautiful waitresses who are serving you, and they get up on the bar and they'll dance to the music. David has a real vision for the, how this bar is its own character. The movie's about Piper and the atmosphere, this whole bar. And David really acknowledged that and finds that the bar has a relationship with everybody else and how that works. And he's very good at it. Do we serve water in this bar? The bar is the center place where everything happens. It's, it's the living room, it's the kitchen. It's places where everybody congregates, and a lot of information, a lot of plot points is, is all conveyed through that bar. Hey, guys! I'd like you to meet my new girl, whose name is... Violet. Jersey. Jersey is an ex-kindergarten teacher and a former nun and is tired of being the only budget in New York City. I was looking at the monitor the other day, and I said, I want to go to that place. It looks like so much fun. Four Canadian, four south of the border, <laughs> six-pack MGD, and a double-blended bag. You want eight shots of what? I got it. Uh, it's always important to try to draw the audience in with authenticity. And when you're doing a picture about a bar, the girls have to know how to pour the drinks, to spin the bottles, and do all the neat stuff that they learn how to do. They're always moving, they're always dancing. They're working very hard. They've created this atmosphere. It wasn't about learning how to mix drinks, because they're basically doing beers and shots. So it's more like an athleticism. Like, no, you don't hold the bottle like that. You grab it like this and you pour it. She's like, Tyra, no, put your body into it. Put your body into it. You know, and I'm like, OK, oh my god, OK. She's like, no, like this. So line them up and then just try and do it real fast. I made them work very hard. I made them sweat. It was like boot camp. For me, it was pretty hard because I have really small hands, so I can't carry more than six beers. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, my manicure is gone because the nails are broken, but your hands are really wet, dirty, and um, disgusting. <laughs> we want to be able to like poop every bottle and pop every shot glass up in the air, and but make it look like, oh yeah, sure, I I flip three bottles over my head and don't even notice. <laughs> We rehearse like crazy because there's so many different things to think about when we're shooting, you know? Good, good, that's great. Now fill it up all the way. So we're always picking Jennifer's brain, like, what's the coolest way to do this and the coolest way to do that, you know what I mean? Make cocktail look like a playground. <laughs> The character Violet has a real gift for writing music. She hears songs, she sees lyrics everywhere. She gets ideas wherever she goes. come out of this movie was that, like any songwriter, there's a progression in her music. In other words, she always had the melodies, you know, she had little bits and pieces of the lyrics, but it's her experiences in New York, it's her falling in love with Kevin, it's her developing relationship with her father, it's her experience with Lil at the bar that gives her that little something extra before she's prepared to sort of take on the music business head on. Diane Warren wrote four songs for the movie, and she's a brilliant composer. Some of your favorite songs out there, chances are some of hers. She's written so many huge hits. Jerry really understands the power of it, because when you put the right song and the right movie together, it's a pretty potent combination. The music is something that embellishes the story and the characters. Let's give a big coyote welcome to Leanne Rhymes. Leanne Rhymes came in to sing this one song for us, and at least it was a single, but 
We showed her the movie, and she had tears in her eyes, and then she decided to do all the songs and eventually become the voice of Piper. Basically what I did, I was watched the clip of her and what she was doing and had to actually match my voice up to her mouth, which was <laughs> very hard to do. I don't like to be alone in the night. I don't I had to put her emotion that she was showing on screen into my voice. It was definitely, definitely acting. I had a lot of fun doing it, though, because it was something that I've never done before. But I do love you. We recorded with like mostly an acoustic guitar, and it was just uh, just very simple and sweet. It sounds like someone just completely wrote it from their heart, which was what Diane did. Okay. They're all completely different songs, so it's, it's really cool. Right kind of wrong is like a TLC, you know, kind of R and B song. You know, Please remember it's a big ballad. You know? and then you go to Can't Fight the Moonlight, a little bit more of a complicated pop rock song. I've never written a song with that many key changes in one song before. But it holds together, it's really a good song. I think Diane's probably one of the best songwriters that has ever lived. She writes from the heart, she writes from life experience. It's been magic between the two of us because her songs fit my voice. Diane nailed these songs. They embody everything. Once you equate it with Violet's story, you really get a sense of her growth. Her songs build into something bigger as she becomes better as a songwriter. And so I think they're, they're amazing. Yeah. Coyotes. <laughs> there was a real sense that newcomers would be really good. We wanted to have a fresh, new, young ensemble cast. And there's an honesty to it because they're not characters that you can see on every television show and movies before. I mean, some of the faces are kind of well known, but I want to give an audience something that they don't feel familiar with. Stand by. And action. Hi, good evening, ladies. Can I help you? No, no. What Violet's essentially doing is taking a little bit of the personalities from each girl and learning something from them. The girls we were looking for had to play those roles in such a way that their personalities were distinct. We certainly succeeded in doing that. I mean, they're as different as, you know, as day and night. My agent sent me on an audition of three for Violet, and when they saw me, they're like, you're not Violet, you're Cammy. So <laughs> that was it. <laughs> okay, number one, here we go. Cammy's like the flirt and the sweet one that always wears pink. And then there's Rachel, who's like tough with her like biker wear. And then there's Zoe, who kind of wears a lot of Indian type inspired stuff because that's just what she likes. I'm Cammy, the Russian tea. Cammy is a sweet one, so if we have a sensitive guy. <laughs> Faces, I mean, wow. She loves her job. She makes a lot of money. She has great clothes. She falls in love constantly. And every time she's a guy, she has a new tattoo on her body, which is really funny, I think. Zoe's the zany one, the one that's just happy and just having a good time. She's not about dancing real sexy. She's more about, hey, everybody, and just rocking the crowd. Rachel is this really tall, loud, pushy, short-tempered woman. So it's hard to get her on a good side, but you want to be there. How do you like that, huh? She is Lil's right-hand man. She kind of runs the show with Lil, and this is where she's going to stay. We all play our little parts. Only Rachel really is a bitch. She's hard. She's rough and tough. And I know Bridget back from Paris and modeling and stuff. And actually, Bridget's rough and tough in person, too, so perfect casting. That's Rachel. You can learn a lot from her. She just cut some guy's ponytail off. Yeah, the court ordered her to take anger management class. I gave her a raise. Hey. Cheers. <laughs> it's a nut house. But it's this kind of nut house with a leader. Coyote Ugly becomes kind of like a finishing school as taught by Lil, you know, which is a very different type of finishing. Um, on sale, 
Lil is somebody who teaches Violet the ways of the world in a very tough, tough lesson. I mean, she knows how to run her bar and doesn't let anything get in the way of that bar being successful. I feel that I've trained my entire life for this job. I, I bartended in New York City for seven years and in Philadelphia for years before that. So it was fun to get back there again. At first, Violet's really scared of Lil. But then she becomes this kind of, in a weird way, a mother figure. Sort of like a, a father figure, maybe. Lil is like our din mama. She's a boss. She can fire us. We, we know she won't because we're so good. <laughs> She's not somebody who's after her dream, which Violet is doing at this point. But she has it. She's living it. And she inspires Violet to live her dream. A big round of applause for the singing coyote from Jersey. First, of course, I was kind of like, oh, who's this girl? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to spend four months working with her, you know? And now it's just kind of fun. We all have the same humor, and, you know, at the end of the day, we're so tired. We're just cracking up. Bridget and Isabella and Piper and Tyra. All the girls, the personalities are so distinct, but so beautiful. We've been having a ball together. Gosh, thank God for them because I'm trapped by the bar with them for hours on this. Perfect. Uh, they're all a bit wacky, but I love it. They're buying the bar with them.